This is the halftime show with Umar Adouri on Pulse 95. Nice strike! Oh, better than nice! Welcome to the halftime show with Omar Adouri. I am your host coming everything sport, international and local. This is the first time ever we are filming from home, live, on Pulse 95 Radio, 95 FM. Shout out to RR, who's at the studio now in Sharjah Broadcasting Authority, making it happen, connecting the dots. Why, you may ask. It's because basically seven days ago or six days ago, I was diagnosed with COVID-19. Now, unfortunately, we don't believe it until we're in it. And this is the perfect time to actually be able to be grateful and assess what's happening. Now, for everyone that is tuned in on the Instagram live at Omar Duri, thank you very much for all your support, all your messages, all your comments, and all the love you've shown me in the last seven days. I also give a special shout out to Maria as well, because not only has she put up with me, she's the one that's been feeding me. One thing you know about COVID-19 is you can't taste or smell anything. So I don't know what she's feeding me, but she is feeding me. And that's, therefore, that's why I'm still here with you today. I didn't want to take two weeks off. I wanted to be here with you guys. And remember, the show would be nothing without you. So make sure you get your questions in. What's coming up on the show? Segment one is my COVID-19, our duty and responsibility as you know, a person who's in the health and fitness industry. What better than for me to get it, to tell you exactly what to expect and how we can be responsible. On segment two, very, very important mental health and how we'll be able to focus on our mental health during such a tough time. Segment three, PSG, Istanbul, racism, Demba Bar. You'll have to tune in to find out more on the only place to be at three, the halftime show on Pulse 95. This is the halftime show with Omar Panduri on Pulse 95. Hello and welcome back to the Halftime Show with Omar Duri. I am your host, covering everything sport, international, local. Now, if you're wondering why we have a different location today, uh, for those that don't know, I was diagnosed with COVID-19 six days ago. And this is something that, you know, a lot of people take some time out to just reflect, uh, isolate, obviously be safe and go through the procedure of you know just trying to get healthy and trying to get rid of this virus so on the first segment it's only right that we talk about that because a lot of people have asked uh, a lot of questions regarding COVID-19 what are the symptoms how do you feel what goes on through your mind you know what what have you learned about yourself plenty a, a lot of stuff that's happened uh, over the last six days now normally we hear about it people are calling it a conspiracy people are calling it you know so many different things until it actually hits one of us and uh you know i've lost people because of covid19 uh, unfortunately may they may they rest in peace and uh, and it was hard for me to kind of accept that because obviously having my mom my wife my cousin uh you know my family with me that was the first thing that i thought of when you know i got it personally so there's so many things there's so many factors i understand why people take time off i understand why people you know choose to take you know a break it's absolutely fine to do that however the reason why i've chose to come on and again i have to shout out to everyone at pulse 95 who you know from yanis to christina to everyone that said take some time off use this time for yourself and the reason why i'm back on is because i chose to be back on i wanted to be active i wanted to be around you know the the people who tune in on the instagram live who, who tune into the halftime show we're show 198 right now and we're two away from 200. And I was thinking two weeks without being able to work or see these people or speak to these people was gonna to be tough enough. So, you know, there is a fear, a fear of, of being positive. Now, normally when you affiliate being positive, you think of good things, but in this case, when you get that message, which by the way, I tested negative a week ago and then positive five days later, you've gotta be super careful and you've gotta be able to get yourself you know, in the right frame of mind, just in case it does come out. And the next thing is the point of contact which you have made, which Almas has asked as well. You know, um, so many things, so many factors, so many signs. The first sign for me was back pain. I was getting a lot of back pain, even though I hadn't trained for a week. I was getting um, headaches as well, which was really tough. I, my temperature was okay. So remember when you walk into a place and they test your temperature, don't just rely on that. That's another thing. You know, it's, you gotta be very, very careful with that. So that was that was tough for me. And then after three, four days, complete loss of smell and taste. And that is something which, you know, you find very hard to believe. That's when it hits home, I think, 
that you know you, you do have these symptoms and it's uh it's really really tough it's very very challenging and it's something that you know i've had to face and my family has had to face as well you know um it, it's it's not easy and you know people always say oh my you're so positive and you know you're out there and you're doing so many things listen guys we go through so much you know mentally everyone gets challenged there's some people who are less fortunate than i am right now to be able to actually express and speak and reach out to you and by no means this is not a message to be able to tell everyone that you know feel sorry for me i'm going through it this is for all those people that are going through it this is for those people that are going to go through it and those people that exactly are suffering those symptoms by in denial this is the only time you can use it to reflect to reset and to re-energize yourself eventually once you've actually been you know uh, tested positive for, for coronavirus the other thing which we're going to be talking about in segment two is the mental side of things so make sure you stay tuned on the only place to be at three the halftime show on pulse 95 this is the halftime show with omar Adouri. Oh, on pulse Salam and welcome back to the Halftime Show with Omar Al-Duri. Thank you so much for tuning in wherever you're tuned in around the world, whether it's 95FM, Pulse95Radio.com, our app, Sharjah Broadcasting Authority. Even if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, the shows are uploaded by Gabby and Super Mario, which you'll be able to see a lot later. Right, some very, very good questions coming in. For those that, you know, obviously have tuned into the show, I was talking about my COVID-19, the experience and what we've learned from it, especially on a mental side. Now, talking about mental side, some of the questions have been coming in. Let me just see, let me just roll through these questions. Right, okay. Uh, is it, here we go. Is, is the challenge because you are isolated and others are not versus lockdown when we all when we all couldn't get out it's a very very different type of challenge I think lockdown you know the experience initially was everyone doing it you know together and I think it was something that you know you didn't have to isolate yourself in a room or or be be mindful of you know not touching anything that anyone else is touching etc but I think this has been very, very different for, for, for me and for my family. Firstly, my concern was, was my mom, um, you know, who, who's, who's obviously an elder, and then my wife as well, and my cousin. And that, that was kind of the thing that I, I had in mind. I was very worried about that the moment they got their negative results, alhamdulillah. Then I was able to actually then come back to me and think about a lot of things. So mentally, it was very, very challenging. It was something that um, I think mental health, especially in an unprecedented time, because you can't really... You can't guess when it's going to be over. You don't know what's happening next. You don't know what kind of symptoms you're going to get. Some people get really heavy symptoms and some people don't. In that sense, one thing it did do for me is it really helped me uh, come out and be honest about it, which was very, very challenging. A lot of people have gone through it and maybe been reluctant to speak about it. And mentally, I knew that if I was holding something back from everyone, people that I had been in contact with, people that, you know, I have a responsibility with my household and I have a responsibility with my community, my reset community. And speaking of the reset community, you know, you've got Kalthum, you've got Ammar, you've got Murad, Arij, you know, all these people that come to reset, Hassan, Spicy, you know, Fahad, everyone, everyone that comes to reset the training program, you know, it's my responsibility to look after them. And then you've got your gym as well. So everyone who was at my gym, my boxing gym, you know, from Terry to to um, Mustafa to Joe, Meg, you know, um, Ish, you know, Sam, uh, Ryan, of course, my boy Ryan, uh, Abby, everyone, everyone who goes, Kareen, you know, the whole works. Just Lulu as well, who's also, you know, going through at the moment. Everyone that's had to go through is my responsibility to be open about it and honest about it, because otherwise I'd be, I'd be worried if anyone else has got it. Now, mentally the room gets smaller that you're in in isolation so you start to you have to move things around you have to sit in different places you have to listen to some music you have to have a, a plan you have to set a map for yourself it's really really important so what i've done is i've actually set something up here where i have to read something once a day um training i haven't done for seven days today was the first day mindset so i've got music audiobook podcasts meditation and breath work there's so many things that i've had to put up just so I can tick off because, you know, the, 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 the time in isolation is really, really challenging. Uh, so, and that some people don't even have these things, you know, so it's very, very tough to be able to, to go through it. But I've been so grateful because my wife's been, you know, cooking 
uh, for me and leaving it outside, you know, uh, outside the, 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 the room again because I can't taste anything. This is payback. <laughs> she could put anything in food and I would not be able to taste it. So that's another thing. And then just being away from my mom, you know, it's been very tough. My cousin is here as well. Shout out to Yasin, who's, you know, in another part of the house. But um, it's been very, very challenging. Everyone, you know, please, please do take it seriously. You know, you don't have to get it to to know how, how serious it is. To learn from your friends, learn from your family, learn from the people who have gone through it because it's really, really challenging on the mind and we're already going through tough times at the moment. Now, please be mindful. If you are able to go out, be grateful, you know, um, do something nice, be kind. And, uh, and, and that's something that I think I've taken away from it. You know, I already had those experiences before, but now having, you know, put myself in it, it's very, very tough. And that's why I wanted to, to, to work. I wanted to be here with you guys on Past Night Five is because of these things. So the halftime show today is on show 198. You know, um, we've got two shows away from 200. We've got people in the back like Ara, Sama, Ray, Vikas, making it happen from the studios. So I'm able to capture it from home until I'm out of isolation. So thank you for bearing in mind with me. I really appreciate it. Coming up next, PSG, Istanbul, racism, Dembaba. So much coming out of the Champions League yesterday. So make sure you stay tuned on the only place to be at three, the Halftime Show on Pulse95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95. It sure is the Halftime Show. It's the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95 Radio live from my isolated spot. Thank you for everyone who's kept me company during the break on the Halftime Show, show 198, COVID-19 edition. It's the first time ever we've been live from my home on Pulse95 Radio 95 FM. We've spoken about my COVID-19. We've spoken about the responsibility behind it and what it's taught me. And on segment two, we spoke about mental health and how this experience has given me a lot of time to reflect, maybe too much time. On the third segment, right, yesterday, Champions League football, a lot of things happening. Manchester United knocked out into the Europa League. However, that wasn't the highlight of the night. The highlight of the night was PSG versus Istanbul Basak Sir, if I can say that properly. The game was suspended after just 14 minutes. The assistant coach Pierre Webo from Istanbul was sent off by Sebastian Koletsku, who was the fourth official. Now, that wasn't the problem. The problem was that in doing so, he had called him a racist term. Now, something we have to bear in mind when it comes down to you know, different cultures, different languages, sometimes those cultures describe things in a certain way. What I love about yesterday, both sets of players, both teams, PSG and Istanbul, despite the importance of them qualifying for the, um, the knockout stages, walked off the pitch. Now, in doing so, it's been a crazy 2020. It really, really has been. It's been a crazy 2020. And this is something that yesterday, the teams got together and walked off the pitch. No one got in the way. No one stood there. No one debated. They walked off. The game was over. Mbappe and Neymar stood firm with their teams. But what was interesting, and a lot of you will, will be able to, to have seen this, is the conversations that were going on between the officials and the management. Dembaba stepped onto the field and spoke his mind. Not only did he speak his mind, but he actually said something which was very interesting. He said, why did you say the black guy? If it was someone who was white, would you say the white guy? No, you wouldn't. So why did you refer to him as the black guy? Now, Dembaba is someone who's traveled all over the world, played for so many different teams and so many different leagues. So he's seen the different cultures and the different forms of expression in doing so this was probably something that a lot of people were scratching their head and wondering what has happened here what is going on it, it was it was summing up 2020 in a nutshell but maybe if this had happened a year ago we would not have had two teams walk off and that highlights how serious it was now i hope Kanetsku gets a fair hearing but I also think there is no excuse for racism or no place for racism in sport. And in by doing so, now that everyone is mic, now that the technology is there, we're able to see exactly what people are saying. There was a, a show on uh, on BN Sports 
called the man in the middle, which was highlighting the difficult job that referees have. I wonder how people will think now once they've seen yesterday's incidents. Speaking of yesterday's incidents, plenty of things happening. Ronaldo versus Messi, a bit underwhelming, a bit boring, but Ronaldo strikes again. Messi fans didn't like it. Ronaldo fans said, I told you so. And so many things happening in that um, world of football. But can we see Messi join Ronaldo? I'm going to put that out there. Text us on 4215, it's a salat or do, or slide into my DMs at Omar Duri and let me know. Next year, is there a chance Messi will be playing alongside Cristiano? Leaving you with that, we're going to play a tune for you. Isn't, ain't that right? Ah, we're going to play a tune for you. And then straight after that, we'll be right back after this on the only place to be at three, the halftime show on Pulse 95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri. That's right, that's Omar Adouri on the Halftime Show on Pulse95 Radio here with you on show 198. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let us know what you think of the show. Smash a like button, share or subscribe to Pulse95 Radio on the YouTube channel, as Tarek always makes fun, to, fun at me because I always say the YouTube channel uh, on Pulse95 Radio. Thank you for everyone tuning in. Some great questions coming in. Zara asked me a question. Does mental health cause stress, eating or overeating? I think, I think Zara, I think everyone, everyone has mental health. I don't think it's something that just happens to one or two people. I do believe it's how we we handle it or how we deal with it. And it's also not being scared to be able to address it and not being scared to be able to do things for your own mental health that can help other people as well. But the focus has to be on yourself first. Self-love is important before you can give it to anyone else. And I think that's something that through stress, through anxiety, shout out to my boy RR in the studio, uh, you know, you can end up then resorting to things like overeating or even not eating. And there, there's two factors to it. Some people are emotional eaters. Some people stay away from food. You know, when it comes down to that, I think I think with COVID, what it has done for me, because I can't taste anything, it, it's kind of put in perspective that now what is good and what isn't if everything tastes the same. So I think that's a, a, a very, very good question that, you know, you, you've asked. I don't think there's one answer for it. But one thing I will say is spending time alone and being detached from everything outside is very healthy for you because then you're able to, to do things that you want when you're outside, but also you're able to detach, you know, uh, be mindful, be be grateful of what you do have and then tackle the world. I think if anything, this year, this crazy year, you know, has kind of put uh, Lane Redmond said something to me the other day. He said 2020 has given me 2020 vision. And it's such a true thing, you know, to say, because who would have ever thought you'd be scared of getting a message saying you're positive? You know, this is exactly sums up the whole year. And that's what happened with me. Um, so I would ask a question. Do you face mental challenges when you test positive and how did you deal with it? Um, to be honest, Masoud, like I said earlier on the show, I was kind of more scared for my family than I was for myself. Uh, the back pain and the headaches were awful, really, really tough, especially that I hadn't trained and I was feeling that soreness. Uh, that was something that was very hard to comprehend. But I think the, the thing that told me or made me feel like, obviously, as you can see now, for those that are tuned in, um, you know, the temperature and me, you know, being the way that I am when I'm not even moving, uh, it tells you that I'm not hundred percent. And I think when you can't taste anything or smell anything, that's the tough thing. But I also have to give a, a shout out to, uh, to Maria as well, who's been incredible. I don't know what she's been feeding me, but she's been incredible in, in, in looking after me from a distance. Uh, and that's something that I think mentally she, kept, she, she was outside, um, my room and she came in not came in but she was looking from outside the room and she saw me staring at a wall <laughs> at one point and she asked if i was okay the room gets smaller you know it really really does and you start to do things you start to sit in different places you start to stretch you start to do all sorts of things it is tough it's very very challenging mentally don't be fooled by people that say it's it's easy it's not easy but at the same time it's it's your perspective yesterday i was on yellow home with anna schofield and she was asking me about it as well and i told her the same thing you know she said you're so positive it's not just about being positive it's it's about being realistic and also at the same time tackling it head on and not being afraid to you know step out of your comfort zone and do things that are going to be good for you mentally and physically and that's i think the lesson that i i took from it 
you know, um, looking at all these things. Let me just take one more question. Uh, how can we best remove the stigma of recovering COVID patients in the Middle East? Often it leads people to hide their cases, which causes more risk. Great question, Dewey, who's on, uh, on the Instagram. Th this is the thing. Hiding it will only cause more pain and cause more issues. And this is why I chose to come public with it once I spoke to my manager at, you know, at Pulse and it was confirmed that I was positive. Hiding it only causes more uncertainty. Who have you been around? Who have you spoken to? Who have you been in contact with? Have you been wearing your mask? Have you been to a place that has been sanitized? These are all factors that the more you hide, the more it will eventually spread even faster. And I think the UA has done such a great job in, in protecting that for a very, very long time because you see the cases were going up, but there were more tests happening. And that's why I'm telling people now you don't want to be locked up for two weeks. You don't want to be facing this. And those that have faced it will tell you even more. We all handle it in our own way. So hiding it is just preventing the inevitable of it getting out even more. Um, so be honest with a lot of people and, you know, make sure you're, you're doing the right thing. Uh, let's see. One got. Do you think UEFA will sanction teams for leaving the pitch? Very good question. Alma, this is the last question I'll take. I promise I um i think to be honest you know i don't think they will do that if they do that in arms and for the right cause and i think yesterday was a perfect example psg and istanbul walking off together united really caused the whole world to take note and i think if someone had prevented them or if they hadn't if they continued as normal and it would have been looked at normal so i don't think um fifa or uefa will, will punish them i think it's a great thing and i think People will think twice now before using that kind of language. And that is full time, guys, on the Halftime Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, you can catch us every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, 3 to 4, albeit from a different location until I've isolated and got myself nice and safe for you guys. I really appreciate the love and the support and all the messages have come through. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'll be back on Saturday. All right, take them away, my man. And hopefully you'll be watching who's up next. Afternoon, Karak. Make an atiyya. Aisha al Mazmi. See, I haven't forgotten. Uh, uh, make sure you tune into their show. They're awesome. I'll see you guys soon. Take care and love, guys. Peace. If you liked this episode of the Halftime Show, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Bye -bye.